David Zimmerman. Mark Povinelli. <laughs> We've got Mark Povinelli here today. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, uh, I'm drinking with my bear. I see that. And, you know, I thought uh, it's, it's such a, it's kind of a dreary day today in, in Los Angeles and we're all stuck inside. Yeah. And I've decided that I'm not putting up with that. And I'm actually going to <laughs> the beach, get oh. up, get my hat on, oh my sitting God. back, have my bathing suit on. Yay. And, oh, there, can we see that? Ooh, a little that, drink. What is that? This is a smoothie, but it looks, it looked tropical, sort of. I love that. Yeah. This, this may not work. It's kind of, uh, I keep going in and out. It's like I'm going into the ocean. Oh my God. It makes me want to take a vacation, Mark. Right? I know. I think we all could use one. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. I'm drinking my uh, ginger ale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sure, that's ginger ale. Yeah, I can tell. Mm -hmm. I actually splurged today, and I got a chocolate milkshake. <laughs> you nice. I, I haven't had one in, like, months. But I yeah. said, you know what? I'm getting one. I, I, I hear you. Uh, it... It'll be the, uh, what are people calling it? The COVID-15 instead of the freshman 15. We're all going to put on 15 pounds because of uh, all being shut in. It's going to be the COVID-15, right? Oh my God. I know. Crazy. How do you do that background? Is it like on all Zooms? Uh, I, you know, I, I wish I could pretend like it's some masterful thing I did. But I, I think you just, at least on Max, you yeah. can go down at the bottom on the video and there's a little arrow. And then you can find your own virtual background. Oh, on the screen share thing, or yeah, I don't know. It's there's a little a bar on the bottom, and one, it says mute and stop video. And right. that's what I'll do today. I'll do a tutorial on how to use <laughs> Mark Pominelli on Zoom. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> that, yeah. So how is one of my favorite people with wow. one of the biggest hearts? Um, so, uh, yeah, Danny Woodburn wasn't able to come. <laughs> I was supposed to call him last night and I completely zone, like I have a lot to do here, which right. I, I'm actually keeping busy. As you see back here, I have boxes. I and see that. I, uh, I started with 60 boxes in my living room. I'm down to 22. Uh, so what's the best thing you found in those boxes? My baby tapes. <laughs> No. I did. And did they have video back then? Oh, wow. Was that <laughs> necessary? Well, we actually did tapes, you know, my mom feeding me and me like going, oh, oh I love how you change the background a little. Yeah. Um, um, but this was a cassette tape. And it, in fact, if you go back to last week when I, it's the Meet the Biz with David Zimmerman, I actually play it for everyone. I have to check that out. That's hilarious. It's like a minute. It's a minute tape, but it's fun. It's fun. Last year, my family, uh, my brother collected all of our, um, you know, home demo or home videos from the, the actual big, huge camera with the 35 millimeter or whatever right. from the, the 70s. And uh, I'm the youngest of four. So there are days and days worth of video of my s sisters, my brother, and then there's like 30 seconds of me because I was the fourth one. And they're like, yeah, by then we're over it. Who cares? Another kid? Whatever. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Those yeah. can be fun. They can be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, now's the time to make videos. I got to say, you know, now's the time to pull out the old iPhone and just create stuff. I know, right? I even got this gift from my friend Rosie that it lights up your face. Sort of. <laughs> As you see, I'm I'm doing the yin and yang of me. I, it's light here and dark. I see that. Right. And I'm probably going to change it to where I'm sitting this way, so I get more light on my face. So, David, tell me <laughs> about yourself, please. Uh, expand on that. Well, Doctor Povinelli, <laughs> I. <laughs> 
You I, don't want me as your therapist, trust me. I don't? Why? I don't know, because I'd have too much fun with it. I'd start <laughs> messing with you. I'm ready. That's, you know what? We should do that one time is, is therapy session <laughs> with Dr. Povanelli. <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I, I'm started drinking, and so has uh, Teddy Z. So is the bear, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, mm. I'm on IMDb the other day, about a month ago. I lose track of time with these COVID days. Right. And I see that you're in this like new movie come, uh, that you're about to film uh, called Nightmare Alley. Right. Mm -hmm. With what, Kate Blanchett, Bradley Cooper, Tony Collette. Uh, William Defoe, Mark Povinelli. Oh no, you're Mark Povinelli. <laughs> no, but but I mean the, the list goes on. I mean it sounds incredible. So uh, yeah, it, it is incredible. I got to say the I should be I should be in Toronto right now filming actually instead of on this glorious beach that I'm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they I was. Um, you know, like this, uh, this pandemic has hit us all uniquely, and this is certainly unique for me. I had, I had shot uh, one day in January, and then had uh, flown back out with suitcases to be in Toronto for two and a half months, uh, Wednesday, March 10th, with all my stuff, like preparing to be there for two and a half months, working on this film. 36 hours later, I was on a flight back home to LA with two and a half months of stuff uh, as they pulled the plug uh, on shooting um, this amazing film, which, you know, we're going to do. We'll do yeah. at some point when this all gets back together. But, uh, um, you know, you get right up to the almost the day of the performance and, uh, yeah. and then they pull the plug, uh, which is, you know, it's part of this business. Oh, yeah. You've got to be adaptable. And uh, I'm certainly trying to make lemons out of lemonade. Uh, yeah. yeah, probably that's actually what it is, right? Well, that's a berry drink. That's not lemons. That's right. Yeah, and exactly. Make lemons out of lemonade. Right, yeah. But it was, it, it was, um, it, you know, when we had talked real briefly before this, you had said, you know, let's, uh, we can, we can focus a little bit on how do you be a working actor, you know, and, and I got to say the funny thing, you know, logically, it would seem like I talk about auditioning and the whole process of getting in a big film like this. And and granted, I've done other uh, larger projects in the past, but this one, which truly is, uh, uh, you know, it's Guillermo del Toro is the writer and director of this film, and who uh, you know recently won an Academy Award for uh, what I like to call the fish movie. <laughs> and, uh, which I haven't had in three weeks. I'm craving fish. Anyway. Oh, there you go. Well, just watch that. And then you, uh, <laughs> you probably don't want fish ever again. Oh, right. No, that was a good one. Yeah. Good uh, one. The Shape of Water is uh, the yes, main Yes, I love but, that one. Uh, so, so I'm sitting there and, and, you know, the life of an actor, I'm, you're, you know, you're, it's great to work, but a lot of times you're not working. And, and I was not working. I hadn't been working in a while and, and getting that, kind of uncomfortable feeling of like, what's next? And is there something next? And, and um, uh, my sister who has my name on a Google alert, like you can, you can type into Google something and it will alert you when there's news about that. Right. So she has my name as a Google alert. So her Google never alerts, obviously. Uh, but one day she, uh, she texts me and says, hey, are you in this? And she sends a link to an article on the web about, I don't know what it's about. And I, and so I click on it and it goes right into uh, like some kind of spam um, website. And I think this is the low point of my career. Now, <laughs> like now I'm getting, I'm getting trolled by my sister of all things. You oh know? My God. And uh, so I kind of let it go because um, I was busy doing other stuff. And then later that day, I was like, what was that? And I then did some, um, Googling myself of like my name and this, this, this film. And, and sure enough, there was this article that had been put out on a, a movie fan website 
about Guillermo del Toro's next film, and it's starring Bradley Cooper and Kate Blanchett and Willem Dafoe and Ron Perlman and Richard Jenkins and et cetera, et cetera, Tony Collette, Rooney Mara, and Mark Povinelli. And it was like, and, what? And this you was, didn't know about it? This was the first I had heard of this. I had never, I mean, it sounds, it sounds preposterous, but it's true. Like that doesn't happen, but it's sure enough, they had, you know, found some of my old work and, and decided they knew, you know, Guillermo casts uh, a lot of his stuff. I mean, certainly auditions people, but this, uh, for the main characters, he, he, he knew who he wanted. And he decided- So you did no audition? I did not. <laughs> I did, and, you just I found even, out about it on Google. <laughs> and I even texted or emailed my agent the next day and said, what is this? And kind of made some joking around like, oh, I must be in this, thinking it was like, didn't believe it was true. And I never heard back from them because they hadn't heard about it either. And it was a month later that they were called by the, by the casting director, or by the producer. And, and the producer's like, yeah, we have a contract and Mark's going to be in, in uh, Toronto for the spring for like three months and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I, had, I said, well, can I, can I, not like I'm going to turn this down, but can I see a script first? You know, am I going to be the fish again? You know, <laughs> what am I doing in this? And uh, so they sent me the script and it was awesome. It's an incredible project. And I'm, I'm pinching myself every day that at some point we'll get to do it. You know, that makes me, I'm tearing up. I mean, it gives me so much joy to hear that. I mean, and to, I mean, the perfect, the perfect person for this. I just picked a cast. You just, I mean, I just, I mean, what, what is it like right now? I mean, when you started out, what, in 98, is you, was your one of your first roles? Uh, uh, so I guess my, I moved out to LA in 2000. Okay. And uh, I had been doing theater in Minneapolis for six or seven years before that. Yeah. With uh, I had done a you know a tiny film in Minneapolis, uh, like a tiny part in a tiny film. So I get that might be the first IMDb credit. But um, yeah, but I came out here virtually having no film television credits. I think that was the only one. And I had shot maybe one or two commercial, like regional commercials. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of came out here, um, not naive. I mean, I had gone to school for acting, knew I always wanted to be an actor, purposely decided to move to a, a smaller city to get good, you know, to get yeah. theater credits, to get a lot of work. I didn't want to come out to LA at 22. I know it works for some people, but I, didn't feel like I was, I, I didn't feel like I was totally sure of who I was mm. by, at that point. So I didn't want other people to define who I was in this business before I had a better sense of who I was and what I could do. So you listened to your gut. I did. I mean, it wasn't a master plan. It sort of fell together that way, but I definitely felt like I wasn't ready and that there would be a time um, where I would be ready, and I, I and that time would present itself. It would, right. it would, it would be clear to me, and it and it was. I think after uh, six or seven years out there, and I loved every second of that. But when when my wife and I decided to come out here, I knew it was time. Even though I was in a big play out there, like the the night we closed, the two days later, I packed up my bags and left. And left. And, and just, how, by the way, how long have you been married? I mean, she, I, I mean, she's a wonderful, gorgeous woman. Thank She's you. been my love. I will. I will. Uh, she, she was just in the other room. Um, she's a first grade teacher. So she had a, like a Zoom meeting of 26 year olds. Like, <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that her by that uh, palm tree over there? Right, right. She's, <laughs> she's back there. Yeah. She's getting massage under the palm tree. Yeah. Yeah. From the teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his cousin right uh so she, we've been married 21 years now yeah wow okay mm -hmm. right before you moved out here uh right it was 98 so about a year just about a year before year and a half before mm-hmm
And you have two lovely kids. Two lovely kids. And I got to say, that's one of the things that I think has sustained me for doing this for, you know, 20 years now is surrounding myself with people, whether I made them myself, <laughs> my kids, or um, finding the right life partner, or certainly friends like you and, and people I've known for a long, long time. Surrounding yourself with really grounded people and people who understand the idea that, um, like I try to tell people that are starting out if they ever ask me, you know, what you accomplish in the next three months, next six months, the next year, don't be so tied to that. It's you want to be in this for 20, 30, 40, 50 years if you still want to. But that's the goal you should have is that this is going to have its ups and downs. It's going to have its high points like getting a uh, reading about a Guillermo del Toro film that you're in. And there's low points like, you know, the day before that when I hadn't worked in a while and didn't know when I was going to work again. Right. Um, so uh, it's, it's that longevity, but to be able to get that longevity, I think you really have to um, ground yourself with people who don't have the expectation that you're going to be in, you, you know, you're going to be on Broadway or you're going to be in a movie or you're going to be on a network television show as a series regular in six months. And if you aren't, you're a failure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about the pro the fun should be about the process. It should be about the journey. It should be about the people you meet along the way, the work that you get to do. Some of my favorite work I've done have been like some of the shows I did back in Minneapolis or, or some of the, you know, the thing we worked on with uh, Corey Allen. You oh know? my God. Yeah. Um, a beautiful people. Yeah. I mean, so those are some of my best memories and we made, uh, we did a lot of, hand wringing and blood sweat and tears for that and made no money and it's still like it's a treasure because of the people i met and do you that. know that I, I don't know did i tell you that i don't know if i told you this but you were he always mentioned you when he was around and he uh, he you were one of his favorite actors oh that's so sweet yeah well i i thought he was uh i i thought what he had that that I really connected to was I felt like he had a very practical passion mm. that makes sense and I think that's what I try to keep my head about in this business is being really practical really understanding the dynamics of the business how you fit into the business how you're perceived in the business you can always try to break those but having a real good understanding of who you are but then having a passion that like blows all of that out of the water yeah and Corey was so passionate but he was also very practical about like knowing how to do things and get things done and how to get where he wanted to go right right yeah um what brings you the most joy ah oh, i mean there's so many things there uh, but you know, in this business wise, there is that, um, there's that moment and it, and I heard about it in college when I was in acting class and I never really felt like I quite got it, but I think, I think that's what keeps you going back is there's that moment when you're performing where you lose kind of you and you lose I'm a very cerebral actor and it gets in my way a lot. Yeah. I think I'm thinking constantly and that's not always great. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of directing as we're going along and, and uh, that's why you have a director. So right. you don't have to. Uh, that's why I find self taping so hard because I, I direct myself as I'm doing it. Whereas if I'm in the room or I'm on a stage in front of people um, auditioning, I can't direct, I just got to be there and be in the moment. So it is that those little nuggets where you get when you sort of get that tingly feeling when you're doing something, you feel authentically moved by working with somebody and connecting with them. And, uh, and then it goes away and yeah. you just, you, you, an hour later go, wait, I, I, where was that, that feeling I had? And it's, yeah. it's one of the best feelings ever. And you just want to get that feeling back and if you're on stage you spend the next 
30 performances trying to get back to that one moment right. and you likely don't but uh when i've had those moments it's what sustains me for a long long time after well it's so interesting uh, that you say that because this morning i was talking to john paces uh the head of performing arts studio west and uh and he said uh, we were talking about doing you know one-on-one -on -one classes to the camera and this and that and and I was saying, it's fine. I mean, I did just one on my own about talking about this, that, playing my cassette tape, you know, memories, sense memories that, you know, you play that, how does it make you feel, et cetera. But um, I work, I enjoy, I mean, I could do a Skype session. I could, right. I'm connecting with you now. I mean, we're having a conversation, it's flowing. Uh, but when I'm, teaching i like to i like to you know i have i need the clay yeah. I, I and i, I and i i want to see the clay move and then i could push it a little and go how about that let's try this again i like to that's what i like to do so yeah. I, i'm there with you about the you know just auditioning for um hi my name is dave <laughs> not that i do that <laughs> but uh yeah right. I mean, yeah i think that I certainly got into this because I I think I'm a pretty, I mean, you know me, I, I think I'm a somewhat guarded person in real life. I mean, I can have a lot of fun and stuff, but I'm not, I'm not doing therapy like to everybody I meet. I'm pretty, you know, but acting gives me the excuse to explore parts of myself that I don't, I want to be dangerous I want to. I want to like imagine myself being a uh, mysterious or dangerous or all these things, but I don't want to do it in real life. Right. Acting gives me that freedom to be able to explore all these parts of me that I'm not comfortable being in real life, and and that's the thrill. That's the exciting part. And yeah. and there's something I don't know. There's something on uh, tomorrow night. I'm doing a uh, play reading oh. on on Zoom with a couple of other actors. Uh, of Betrayal, Her Harold Pinter's Betrayal, which is like a really intense play. Is uh, it out, out there in the ethers? Can anybody see it or is it a private? Yeah, no, no, anybody can see it. I can't promise you if it's going to be any good or not. I mean, it truly is almost going to be like a cold re reading and I don't know how we're going to connect over Zoom and if yeah. it's going to work, but I'm really fascinated to see like, are there dynamics in there that I can learn from, even if it's a train wreck? That, um, that then we can use later when we're all back together again. Right. And, and certainly that comfortability of, of, you know, there are times when you're on film where you're, you're reading, you know, just off to the camera lens and that actor that you're working with can't maneuver their head uh, to read opposite you behind the camera. So you're looking at a dot on the wall or you're looking at, um, a green screen and, and you know there are times where we have to, we have to. manufacture that moment that you're you and I are talking about connecting yeah. manufacture that uh, without anybody there and that's and, something to learn too I mean to yeah. to really I mean you see you see that green dot right there uh, where the camera is and you see who that is and you really you know it takes you there and it takes you to that connection with them. Um, and, right, and even something, I mean, this sounds absurd, but something like this background, <laughs> you know, if, if you were really shooting, uh, if we were really shooting something, we didn't have the budget to be on a beach, we do something like this, yeah. yet I have to recreate, obviously, that uh, what I'm looking at is you and beyond you is a, is a jungle or whatever, you know, whatever's on the other side of you. And I have to feel the sand in my feet. And I have to imagine that I'm not sitting on a, a chair, I'm sitting on a, a log or whatever, you know, and, and the wind is whipping in my face, all that, you know, which sounds like duh, but it takes some work, it takes some effort and it takes some imagination. And we're asked to do that all the time. And that's what makes those performances so rich. Just even watching, um, so we shot uh, that that day in um, with Guillermo uh, for this Nightmare Alley, and and he the set that they had created, they created a little diner from the '30s. Are we supposed it, to talk about it? 
we can talk a little bit about oh, it. A little, a little, okay. And uh, the the magic because every every item in there, the art director, you know, filled it with nothing was imagined. Everything was real. Yeah. But meanwhile, there's a giant camera right here, and there are background actors like moving out of the way from the camera. And I'm trying to do a scene with Bradley Cooper, and he's got to like maneuver his eyes to, you know, nothing is real in that real environment. So even when you get the most luscious set and uh, the most incredible actors and the most incredible director, you still got to like deal with a thousand things that aren't real. And mm -hmm. so to be able to like uh, center yourself and, and, and allow yourself to find the truth in that moment, that grounded truth is, is vital. And I think there's something weird about these Zoom things yeah. that we might all be able to kind of play with that without any, um, uh, there's no stakes, you know? Like right. Uh, right. who cares well, if we do a reading tomorrow night and it's a disaster. Yeah. I mean, it's fun and it's, 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 you know, it keeps us going. I mean, this keeps me going to connect with friends and, and, and people through Meet the Biz. And uh, it's really about, it, you know, back to that for a second, it's about that focus, like you said. It's just really the, one, one other question that I had is what was a, what was a, either a TV show or a film that you said, oh, I, I think I've made it. Or I not necessarily made it, but I feel like, ooh, this is it. This is this is the next level. Well, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think a few of them happened, and I didn't realize it until hindsight. Mm. Uh, I was in a, a play that um, uh, a play out of New York. It was called The Doll's House, Ibsen's uh, Memory Mind's Doll House, and. Uh, what I walked into, I thought was going to be some crazy lunatic East Village play, turned out to be something that we toured around the world for nine years. Well, it was brilliant. I saw the the, the DVD. Yeah. And you take, you know, that's the thing about you. You take so many chances with all the different pieces. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, you're not afraid to to walk around naked. You're not afraid to, I mean, in which you did in that film, right? I mean, I, on the play. Yeah, and, and we made it into a film, and I, th I think the, the film the same, but um, right, uh, because the work called for it, like it was justified, it was motivated, and, and that show had a plenty of risks in it that, uh, that, that, that I was willing to take, and they were exhilarating. It was, it was uh, the moment where I realized that I could be... Uh, limitless in a way mm. um that there wasn't the only thing i mean it sounds cheesy but the only thing holding me back was me that uh um my own protection my own insecurity uh but what that play called for were things that i didn't think i could do until i did them and I then they were, and yeah. then i did them yeah there you go. um yeah but that and then uh I, I do remember um, it, it didn't, uh, it only lasted one season, but uh, my dream was always to be on a sitcom, oh. to, to, to do a live camera. I thought that was the perfect combination. There's live studio audience things that are almost dinosaurs now, but uh, the perfect combination of, of, of comedy and uh, a live audience, but also film that, television. Are you, are you there, Chelsea? Yes. Yeah. And so there was a, a few, I don't know, it was, gosh, probably seven or eight years ago now, but an NBC television show, uh, I think we were on Wednesday nights at 8.30 and, and uh, they had a, a audition for one of the series regulars for it, for the pilot. And I remember um, going through the audition process and, and that, you know, you, it keeps getting escalated and escalated and the pressure is higher and higher. And when I, did the final audition for Chelsea and all the producers and the execs at NBC. And I walked out of there and I felt really good about it. Mm. And uh, I was driving home and I didn't make it more than 10 minutes home when I got a call from my agent and my manager. And I pulled over to the side of the road and it's hit me now. Like it just was that moment of this was my dream and I'm going to do it. And, uh, and it was, it was so much fun. And uh, um, 
and that was kind of like, hey, yeah, like, uh, I think, uh, I think I can't beat myself up anymore. I think I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I mean, you've been in so many, and I remember when you got Water for Elephants, it was like, you know, I mean, I get just so excited. And that's what, I'm going back to what you said about the people that surround you, the people that are with you um, as friends on your journey and family. I, I say that, this a lot, that I'm so blessed to have gotten connected with people like you and friends like you and, and the people that I consider my extended family. So. It, I, I think that's why we should all do it. You know, we should do it to um, find those, those parts of ourselves that, that um, we want to explore in a safe environment, meaning uh, uh, through a craft. Yeah. Uh, but it's so much about the people. There's nothing, I mean, um, if you haven't done it already, when this time all changes, get out there, like do, do Nick's, get, grab a team together and make a little five minute movie. Uh, go do a play that 10 people see it doesn't matter you know it's uh do during this time grab together five friends and do a zoom play reading yeah if you've looked at it twice those connections are what you're going to walk away with not an imdb credit or uh you know a, a paycheck or any of those things or somebody stopping you on the street i mean none of that matters it's it's the you know it's the connecting with the people yeah it matters. Well, I enjoyed connecting with you, Mr. Povinelli. Me too. Likewise. I'm going to go take a dip in the ocean. Uh, that sounds good. That we'll, sounds do good. we'll do it again someday. Well, and one of these days, who knows, maybe I'll find another half and, and we'll, we'll actually go to like Lake Tahoe or somewhere for a weekend. <laughs> I'm you there. Your honey and mine. You, uh, you got it. Bring the teddy bear. It's, it's not that complicated. Well, if you ask him. <laughs> All righty. I love you. Thank you. Love you too, David. Bye. Bye.